Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Good quiet morning. We're out of the bomb shelters. My name is Andrea Simijov, and you are listening to Pull Up a Chair on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Just keep your computer on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com all day long. You're going to get it, the non-fluff news. You won't get a lot of political uh, correctness. We don't do it so well around here. And um, But you'll be knowing that you're hearing sincere Zionist hearts, Zionist words, and more than anything, a willingness to engage in discourse. Before we go on, let me say good night, good morning to my friends in America. We're having a romper room moment. Anybody who gets it, drop me a note. Um, to good night. Wow, it's late in the U.S. And we have Boketover at Israel. Hi, Canada. The U.K. is listening in. Australia. Indonesia is listening in this morning. That's nice. Brazil. India. Stay safe, India. Wow, what's going on with COVID there? Man, Argentina is listening in this morning and Panama. My baby boy just left Panama and I think he's in Costa Rica now. Not so sure. He doesn't check in that much. Anyway, I wanted to say that clearly they listen to this show because I ranted last week. Last week's show was extremely strident, far more than I like to be. And they listened to us. They had a ceasefire that afternoon. <laughs> clearly those in power are listening to pull up a chair. And uh, when the producer told me, uh, the engineer told me who was listening this morning, I realized we really do have a diverse crowd. We are the diversity crowd, but we are diverse, but united in our love of Israel. By the way, the chat room is open. Uh, you can click at the little red button. If you're listening on the chat room, tell me that you're listening in. Tell me where you're listening in from. I would love very much to just be able to get and see where people really are this morning and who they are. So when we come back, we're going to talk about the week that was. And of course, it's going to be a lot of Torah. Stay tuned. Andrea Simitov, I'll see you on the other side. Did a nice Jewish girl from Delaware end up living in Israel? Shalom! I'm Natalie Sapinski. Join me on my show, Returning Home. Meet different people who have moved to Israel. Hear their personal stories, their highs, their lows, and everything in between. Each week, we talk to experts on immigration and the process of moving to Israel. Listen to Returning Home every Thursday, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Okay, we're back. Andrea Semenjo, pull up a chair, a little off mic bantering. And um, I was saying, you know, what happens if I'm, I'm not behind the mic, but I actually go take a little break in between? I said to the engineer, would you play like the best of Broadway? Great moments in Sweeney Todd. I don't think he found that so funny. Anyway, um, you know, sometimes I worry. You know, I was thinking about last week's show. Ironically, I, you know, the show's end, and I'm giving you just a little insight of what it feels like to kind of be me in my pajamas every day. And some days, you know, I worry. I, I don't get behind this mic in order to offend. I don't get in, you know, what? remember in America, I remember, I think it was like in the 80s, late 70s, early 80s, it was a new genre of radio hosts, and they were called shock jocks unlike jewish schlock jocks that's a joke but shock jocks and the whole idea is that you could just say anything and, and we know we know i mean uh, the late great rush limbaugh was certainly part of that i remember in new york bob grant and there was this sean hennett 
Kennedy, I think his name is. Many of them right wingers. Uh, but anyway, you know, or claim to be. To me, I found them just to be extremely lucid. But anyway, um, that was never my intent here. It's an honor to be able to get behind the mic and hopefully present what I think is an authentic Jewish voice, an authentic Jewish woman's voice, but emphasis on the word authentic. I try not to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not good at that artificiality thing. But anyway, so last week's show, I was particularly heated up. It was scary. We were under siege. And it seemed that wherever we went, what every page of whatever newsprint or, or internet news source you opened up, they weren't getting it. We were under siege, but we were being triply besieged by the international press, by public opinion. It was crazy. Damned if we did and damned if we didn't. And this week I was meeting with a coaching client, lovely gal, really a fabulous woman. And we were kind of exploring some thoughts and her questions made me think about this incredible audience, the interaction we share. Oh yeah, wait, let me just say, go, to go back to that strident moment, I apparently hit quite a few friendly chords. I received some lovely notes during this week. Uh, they wrote to me at Andrea at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. You can also do the same. And a lot of, especially our Christian friends, were very moved by the show because they felt that same feeling of frustration, a feeling that they were on the moral high road with regard to Israel, and yet sort of like bolstering me and mine up, that we should remain strong despite the massive public condemnation. And I like that. And again, so it gets back to the worrying, my being too strident. So as my client brought up, am I involved, not me personally, but we, us, is it the journey or is it the goal? What is it? And when, what was it that she asked? She said, what, wait, she asked a great question. I'm turning to my pages. What would it take to make everyday life enough? So it got me thinking about what we're doing here on Israel News Talk Radio and what we're trying to do in particular on Pull Up a Chair. Presenting issues, presenting thoughts, not necessarily answering the questions getting to that end goal, hitting the bullseye. I don't know what the name is on the bullseye, but rather asking the questions that continually present civil discourse, civil dialogue. My great late friend, Barry, um, Barry was a geneticist and uh, before his untimely death. And he used to say the greatest science in the lab wasn't there just making a discovery, aha, aha, we cured X, Y, or Z disease, but rather as I got close to cures and passed it on to the next division who would work on creating tablets, inoculations, therapies, a good day was when they were presented with a whole new slew of questions, and that was successful science, the creation of new questions, new things to be addressed. And um, so again, wondering whether it's the journey versus the goal, you know, we're not talking about, oh, everybody in the class participated, everybody gets a prize, you know, good job because everyone's a winner. You know, clearly there are those that are on top some moments and those that aren't. But the question I'm asking, Andrea, I'm asking all of us listening out there, is what is our legacy? Are we journeying it or are we goaling it? What is the legacy of our being, the embodiment of sincerity, the embodiment of being God-centeredness, the embodiment of morality, to be doing, whether it's eating, working, hugging, interacting, questioning, are we the embodiment of holiness? And I present this to you today because we've come out of, what was it? This is an 11-day war, an 11-day siege versus the six-day war 
versus the 73-year-old war versus the 3,000-year-plus war against the Jews? Is it a war to be won or is it a war to be worn and worn proudly? I don't know. Anyway, I came across a lot of thoughts this week. Um, a lot of thoughts, a lot of things coming across my feeds. And something came across, I, I'm not going to name her because she doesn't know that I'm actually using part of her quote, but uh, the director of the student programs at Stand With Us Israel. Stand With Us Israel. If you haven't heard about it, Google it, join it, follow it, like them. They're doing holy work. And they sponsor a lot of Jewish students to come to Israel as well as um, they go to the States and they work on the American college campuses. And I can tell you, if there's ever a most thankless place to be hanging out today, it has got to be the American college campus. And this gal talks about some of her Zoom contacts with these kids and telling them that the harsh reality is that their lives from today, not from today, the last few years, certainly, but if you are the parent of a Jewish child in college today, forget about your Zoom golly golly, your Hillel brunches, and you're getting together on Israel Independence Day and waving your flags and wearing your mug and dovids, your beautiful Jewish stars, or your chais proudly. Jews have had a honeymoon. America, the golden of Medina, has been a honeymoon place. What is the word? The halcyon days? of America, 75 plus years, it's gone. That the four years of university, if you choose to identify as a Jew, and more, if you identify as a Jew who loves Israel, I hope you still have frat nights and sorority rushes because anti-Semitism is on the rise and it's going to continue to do so. You're going to have a lot of decisions to make. And if I could talk to the young people who are listening in, um, all of you who are in the world of college or in high school, going into college, don't be angry at your parents for, in many cases, having led you to believe that you are part and parcel and equal in the fabric of America and that you still can maintain your Jewishness. It doesn't blend. It doesn't go. The overtness, the isolation you will continue to feel as you identify as Jewish is something that your parents did not present to you or protect you from. There are so many. I know that during this last war, the deadly silence that I heard from my American Jewish friends who are secular and somewhat proud of being Jewish. They step up when it's Israel Independence Day, when we talk about Israeli achievements and I post them and I say, we're so proud to be Jewish. I'm Yisrael Chai. Zum gali gali. And yet, when we're under siege and we're under siege on the pages of the Washington, what is it, the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, my friends are silent. They're silent perhaps because they're frightened. Occasionally, out of maybe a thousand American friends from college, from high school, from summer camp, Jews all over, I received four notes saying, stay safe, be careful, we're worried about you. Okay. But these crying face emojis, where are you? What are you telling your kids? I posted this show and I said, the honeymoon is over. And if you don't know the honeymoon is over, open your eyes. There are decisions to make. The difference between this honeymoon period and 1938 Germany, and I'm telling it to you now, is that today we have a Jewish army. 
we have a modern state of Israel, rich with high tech, rich with secularism, rich with, rich with religiosity, rich with anything you want. There are days to be a human being or a Jewish being. There are days to be a Jewish doing. My name is Andrea Simintov. Give it some thought. I'll see you on the other side. Shalom, everybody. Making a difference often takes just one moment and one person at a time. I am Orly Benny Davis, your show host on Israel News Talk Radios from Jerusalem with love. You'll be hearing people talking about politics, religion, social issues, and making a better tomorrow. Join me, Orly Benny Davis, for God and Country. From Jerusalem with love. Wednesdays on Israel News Talk Radio. Okay, we're back. Andrea Simitov, pull up a chair on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Uh, just to kind of finish <laughs> that last rant. Um, you know, a lot of people, again, if you don't know Jewish history, if you don't understand Jewish history, we don't have to understand it. We don't have to get it. But again, like Barry said, got to ask the questions, got to be in the process. Um, a lot of us can ask, why is this happening? I'm so good. You know, I have my, I have my Hanukkah bush. I eat, you know, I eat out with my friends. My kids are all intermarried. We go to ecumenical services. Um, but, but if you understand Jewish history, this is not a big mystery at all. Nothing's new. Antisemitism manifests itself in different times in different locales. Remember, there was a time if somebody would make an anti-Jewish remark at a cocktail party with shrimp platters being put, passed around and everybody so elegant, that person would have been saying the Jewish slur, the anti-Jewish slur would have been persona non grata and blackballed. Today is cute. Today it's chic. Jew hatred, Jew disdain is out there. It's prevalent. And Jews are scared, particularly secular Jews who aren't equipped with anything more than a bagel and lox Jewish pride and happy, secretly happy that we have such a good army here. We have such good high tech and our models are stunning. And some of our actresses are idiots, but they're there and they're gorgeous. Okay. Um, you watch a little shtisel. Is that the name of the show? Shtisel. And you feel, ah, oh, it's nice. A fiddler on the roof understanding of Judaism, but you don't want to still be too Jewish doesn't matter what you feel. You've been outed. You are too Jewish. If you are barely Jewish, you are too Jewish. At least be comforted that there is an incredibly strong, vibrant, flawed, and fabulous Jewish state that will always have your back. I suppose... The real request is perhaps it's time to publicly do it with baby steps, but have Israel's back because she will remain. She is here. She is forever. She will protect us. She will rescue us. And indeed, she will keep you and yours safe. It's okay. You could say the dirty word. You too can be a Zionist. All right. Um, Okie doke. Let's just say pages and pages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's just get out of New York for a little bit. Um, so it appears that among the other, not only are they dragging Jews now, dragging Jews while other diners sit. Sound familiar? Haven't you watched any Spielberg films? They're dragging Jews out of Trefa Asian restaurants in Los Angeles 
coming in, who's a Jew? And everybody puts their head down and doesn't want to be identified. So now a kosher pizza place in upper Manhattan, a Jewish owned, has been vandalized. It's kosher. All right. So I could have been there. Okay. So, um, all right. So a kosher pizza place on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, Jewish owned, like many businesses. Okay. The loonies are out, but the loonies are running the ship, uh, has been attacked. So the attack on Saba, I guess it's called Saba, not Saba. Saba is just another Jew hate incident. But in the 1930s in Germany, not a long time ago, many people are alive and they witnessed it. Okay, they're elderly. So even though that was state-sanctioned, um, sponsored violence, these attacks on kosher, on Jewish businesses, are much more like the pogroms, the pogroms that your grandparents fled from. Remember, hundreds of Jews murdered by their neighbors? Do you think I'm overreacting when I ask, is the U.S. headed this way? You might say, oh, Andrea, that's an exaggeration. Oh, Tagzim. But I say to you, that's convenient thought. What will you do? Will you sit and watch and accuse those of us who rant and rave and say, take a look, take your stand, decide what side you're on? Will you sit and watch and do nothing? Will you not speak up? Or will you send us teary faces when we're under siege. The worst, the worst, forgive me, I'm going to say it, is when Israel is under siege and then we receive notices of never again, never again from those who are not taking any other stand than to sing to us an already in sync choir. Does saying never again feel good? Does saying Am Yisrael Chai feel good? Does it feel good to say it and then go home to the barbecue while we keep it for you? Please, please give it some thought. We're here. We have your back. Will you have ours? Okay. Huh. I said I wasn't going to rant. Look at the rant. All right. Apartheid state. That's the other thing. Oh my gosh. I have 16 pages of notes and I'm only going to get to this one because sometimes I get a call. I get a WhatsApp. I'll get a, uh, an email saying, Andrea, you know what? I don't know what to say. I go to work and they say, yeah, but Israel's an apartheid state. Yeah. But Israel is, you know, has separation of classes. And I look over my shoulder. What do I say, Andrea? I don't know. So, you know, I'm going to give you a couple of facts couple of facts, the research. I got this research and I re-researched just to make sure that it was accurate. So apparently, just for an example, those who accuse us, the population of Egypt, do you know how many live in Egypt? 100 million nefashot, souls. You know how many Jews live there? 10, but they accuse us. Jordan, 10 million Arabs live in, jo in Jordan. Zero Jews. Saudi Arabia, 34 million people. How many are Jews? Zip, nada, Lebanon, 7 million, zero. This is a voice from the apartheid state screaming to you. 17 million in Syria, no Jews. Iraq, interesting, has four Jews. I wonder how many kosher restaurants. Out of a population of 39 million. Iran, 83 million people, ironically. They have, I think 1% is Jews. They have uh, 8,300,000 Jews still living in Iran. Israel, how many people? What is the population of Israel? 9 million people. I believe, I obviously forgot to write this down. We have 1.9 million Arabs with full civil rights. Schooling hospitalization, work protection, social security. Yeah, the apartheid state, don't even go there. Just because you scream a lie so many times doesn't make it real. Uh, 
All right. So one other thing that I find very interesting, one of the things that Israel sits and says, because we try to defend Jew hatred, they hate us. So the real reason they hate us is that we have bad PR. PR here is called Hasbara. We have bad Hasbara. Well, I have to tell you something. There's nothing wrong. Just like everything else Israel does, Israel does PR just fine. The fact is, if you can only get your message out to your choir, it's like, don't blind me with the truth. Don't confuse me with the truth. Israel's public relations is excellent. It's good quality. It cannot counter anti-Zionism and at its root, anti-Semitism. And the real reason is, here comes the most unpopular statement of the day. Anti-Semitism is, it is a fact. It is like oxygen. When I think about how many billions, billions, maybe now trillions of dollars have been put into anti you know, anti-Semitism combating organizations, more mu- museums, more edifices to remember the Holocaust, more teaching. It's important. You got to know. But start putting the money into Jewish education, Jewish pride, bolstering Jewish identity. Anti-Semitism, yes, no, it'll take it, take care of itself. Andrea Semitov, guess what? See you on the other side. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. This is Shai Bentico, and each week I'll be webcasting to you from Judea, origin of the word Jew, a people besieged and beleaguered in every generation. Nazi Germany is but a memory, but in its place the world invented the phantom Palestinians as this generation's internationally authorized Jew killers. Tune in for a different slant on life in Israel, Phantom Nation, every Monday. Hi, I'm Rabbi David Aaron. The soul basics are the most profound the most essential, and yet often the most neglected in our education. Join me for Soul Talk on Israel's News Talk Radio and discover the secrets to love, spiritual growth, and personal power. We're back. Andrea Simento, full of a chair. Israel News Talk Radio.com. Outside my window, we have the, the fire engines going, the sirens, the cranes. Very interesting. Our enemies say they're going to push us into the sea. They're going to destroy Israel. Just, you know, sit back, turn to channel Israel destruction. Well, I got to tell you, apparently they haven't gotten the message in my neighborhood because there is so much building going on, so much construction. They're laying down sewers. And I don't think it is for, God forbid, a new Palestinian state. So uh, (laughs) get the message, morons. So here we go. Um, So this week's Parsha, you know, again, when I sit and I say the American honeymoon is over, you know what else is over? We know, according to Torah, the Israelite honeymoon is over. Now we're beginning to show our true colors. Now we're starting the kvetching, the kvetching. Oh, boy, we remember the fish we ate for free in Mitzrayim, Egypt. The cucumbers, the melons. This is the equivalent to today's phrase. uh, We remember the good old days. Nothing today is like the good old days. You know, I'm going to step away from my notes for a moment. The name of Egypt, which has become synonymous with bondage. Sorry to any Egyptians listening in this morning. You're good. You're good. Um, Mitzrayim in Hebrew there's a magic inside each word in Hebrew is generally, with rare exception, a three-letter root, two-letter root. Inside the word Mitzrayim, Sadi Reish, is the word Tsar. We use the word Tsar to denote confinement. Uh, when somebody says, Oy va voy, do I have Tsuris, Tsara, Tsuris, the word Tsar means not that I have heartache, I have uh, such sadness. It means that my heart is constrained. It is a gate. And so in the word Egypt actually denotes the fact that Egypt had borders that were unbreachable. You couldn't get out of it. 
this is the land of confinement. And suddenly you have B'nai Yisrael here in the, they're sick and tired of that manna. They're sick and tired of it. You know, well, it'll be whatever you want. It looks a little like tofu. They don't want it anymore. They want meat. They want quail. They want to have some barbecues. They become so unreasonable, so demanding. They are not starting. They're continuing their demonstrative uh, envisioning or, or being of becoming those stiff-necked people, terribly difficult. And the commentators point out the different reaction that Moshe had to this, what we call this, um, the the wanting of the meat incident to that of the golden calf. After the golden calf, Moshe, he immediately prayed on behalf of the Jewish people. But after this whole, we want meat incident, a frustrated, a terribly frustrated, at the end of his rope, Moshe realizes that the golden calf was not, sadly, an isolated incident. And he complains to God, why has thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Like, why do I have to carry them in, as a bosom to a nursing father? He realizes that leadership of the Jewish people would never be a simple matter. I get off script again and I say, all these people that want to be prime minister, pray tell why. Give it to the first jerk that wants the job. Okay, that was an aside. Okay, so even the greatest leader of all time, Moshe Rabbeinu, he loses patience. He becomes frustrated by that almost impossible task, dealing with Jews. So what does God do? God placates him, allows him 70 elders to assist him. However, having so many other leaders to deal with also creates problems. And only a leader of Moshe's greatness is able to overcome the, um, the, the, the egos involved. And to make matters worse, the Pasha concludes with Miriam and Aharon, his brother and sister, holy people, really leaders in their own right, speaking against Moshe because of the Kushite woman to whom he was married, Zipporah. Even his sister and brother were speaking against him. So being a Jewish leader is certainly a frustrating experience. We see it. There's nothing new under the sun. And certainly the Torah lays it all out for us. Um, <clears throat> a leader is always under the public eye and will always be exposed to pettiness and jealousy. I must bring this down. Rabbi Salavechik explains that Moshe now realizes that being a leader means more than just being a good teacher. Rav Salavechik states, we must have, in addition to teaching dedication, a uh, personal commitment for otherwise, you know, it's not enough to be a gifted orator, a gifted academician, because otherwise the burden is unbearable. Selflessness, readiness to subordinate personal career and egotistical ambitions, and most important, according to the Rav, empathy an ability to teach with feeling, not only clarity. Maybe, um, how can I say this? We can, okay, perhaps we can say that the key to successful Jewish leadership, I hope you listen. I think that Bibi's listening in this morning for sure. Uh, Naftali Bennett is definitely on my page. Gideon Sar, I'm not so sure. But Jewish leadership successfully can be found in the opening sentence of this week's Parsha, in the commentator's explanation, and Aharon did as he was told. Every time that Aharon kindled the menorah for the next 40 years, he did it with the same enthusiasm and commitment that he did the first time. A truly good leader cannot rest on his laurels, cannot say, look at what I did, look at what a great general I was. He must always exercise the same level of dedication and commitment today as he did the day before. Okie doke. Let's, con let's connect the, uh, let's connect. Hold on a second. I wrote something here. Let's hope I don't uh, disconnect again from Skype. I seem to have a habit of that today. Um, here, a Corona note. You know, from this book, this book of Bamidbar that we're in, um, 
to take a quote, it says, so that there will no longer be a plague among the people of Israel when the people of Israel approach the sanctuary. So says Rabbi Meir of uh, Pramishlan, quote, if heaven forbid, chas v'shalom, misfortune, sickness, or distress strike, people approach the sanctuary in prayer. They open their hearts to give to the poor and mend their ways. However, plague or misfortune must not be the only motivation for prayer. A Jew must be able to pray to God and give tzedakah also in happiness, abundance, and good health. Makes me think how many of us revisited our values, revisited our core beliefs during the year of Corona in which we are beautifully emerging here in Israel. And we made moral, holy decisions and suddenly we're back at the beach. Movie theaters are opening this week. I can't wait to go bowling. Uh, I've already been camping and I'm gonna go camping again, please God, next week. What promises? were made when we get out of this. This is how we will be different. Are we still different a month out? How will we be? Will we still be different and better a year, a decade, and a lifetime out? Which brings me also to the question of time. Time. Time is not measured, we learn by Torah, simply by the duration and the contents in terms of achievement. When we take a look and we evaluate time, there are a lot of differences between content. You know, when you are bored, when you are listening to somebody spew an anti-Israel diatribe, oh man, the minutes tick by. But when you are involved in holiness, it's just magnificent. So the same thing goes. One cannot compare an hour of prayer, an hour of outpouring his soul before God with an hour of sleep. You know where I got that from? It was in a letter, I don't know to whom, from the Lubavitcher Rebbe. I love it. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, my gosh. We're winding down. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah. Okie doke. We're familiar. We all know the Rashi comment. It comes in the second verse of the Torah reading that the priest who lit the candelabra, we said that, was to keep the fire close to the wick until the wick caught fire and rose itself. There's a lesson, there's a metaphor in here regarding the lighting of the great candelabra, but also in life. Unless the wick truly catches fire and holds that flame on its own, all the effort it expended in attempting to light the wick will ultimately be fruitless. It will be unsuccessful. I'm thinking about that Hasbara. The metaphor is also true in family life. For if our children and our grandchildren are unable to be successful on their own, then parents have somehow failed their responsibility regarding their own children. It's also true. I talk a lot about education. Students who can never be productive on their own, no matter how much knowledge they have, are not going to be a source of pride to their families, to their, te to their teachers, to their communities. You know, we've witnessed a lot of times in life, people who somehow voted to be the most likely in their class to succeed, but they don't fulfill that. The result is what counts. Everyone agrees that success is measured by the ability to eventually achieve by their own efforts. It's the task of our generation to take a look at our history, the past tumultuous centuries, to remain clear, keep the light in our crosshairs, and see that the flame of Israel is strengthened, continues to rise once again in our days. We have choice. Shabbat Shalom, umivorach from Jerusalem. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. Just click the orange button at the top of the IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com page, log in as yourself or an anonymous guest, and join in on the fun. You'll meet other listeners from all over the world who listen to Israel News Talk Radio, and you can make new friends. 
Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. It's the closest you can get to being in the studio with us. We love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips. With scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. If you love Israel News Talk Radio, then you'll love our Facebook page. We keep you up to date on what's happening in Israel. Plus, little surprise treasures that we don't share on the radio. Go now to follow us on Facebook. Just look for the Israel News Talk Radio Facebook page. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us by clicking on the like button. We post great stuff there that you'll want to share. Israel News Talk Radio on Facebook and Israel News Radio on Twitter. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Israel News Talk Radio. 